Thorson from Exivity Incorporated, and this is a Compute Cycle Deep Dive on Brute Force Password Cracking against KeePass. KeePass is a program written in .NET, ported to a few other platforms, that is designed to store all of your passwords in one place. It uses good encryption and good cleanup code to make sure it doesn't accidentally disclose your password when you don't want it to. You start it up and can either set a master text password, use a Windows login credential, or a key file. You can actually use all three at the same time. It does not, however, have a back door. I mention this because while doing this research, we came across more than a handful of posts from people in my situation begging the developers to help them break into their KeePass file because they forgot their password. It can categorize your passwords, keep notes about each one, and do some cool automatic typing copying to the clipboard, and aging of passwords. It's really robust and complete. The task of breaking into a KeePass password file landed on my desk. I was told that the password was exactly 12 characters long, but we didn't know which characters. So doing what we do, we set out to brute force crack the password. You might ask why we didn't use rainbow tables. Everyone is using rainbow tables these days, and they are all the rage. Well, that's true if you are breaking into Windows boxes or LinkedIn or other places that don't adequately randomize their passwords. But in this case, our destination was the decryption of a file. Rainbow tables work well against plain text passwords that are poorly encrypted. They don't work well against files. There's a great write-up here about false assumptions you may have about password cracking, including rainbow tables. In the example here, our master password was only six characters, and you see what happens when we enter the wrong password. Do that three times, and you are shown an empty KeePass application. We know through other means that the password protecting the KeePass file is exactly 12 characters, and the owner has fat-fingered or mistyped one of the characters, and now can't get back into the password store. The first thing we need to do is find an automated way to try as many passwords as fast as possible, also called brute forcing the password. Since KeePass is a graphical program, typing in each password one at a time by hand at the keyboard would simply be impossible. Sure, this could be automated with sophisticated macros, but the solution doesn't scale well, especially when the application pops open a blank database after a certain number of failed attempts. We'd have to plan even further to make sure our macro script stopped when it finds the correct password. Because of these limitations, macros are out. So what if you had code that all it did was the first part of the decryption process? You strip it of all the GUI stuff that makes it look good and just focus on decrypting the database. Luckily, someone already did that for us. Enter two possible programs to do the job. The first is called KeePass Self Brute Force. The reason we didn't go with this program is for two reasons. The first is that it will only execute against KeePass version 1 databases, and we had a version 2 database. The second is that it seems to be significantly slower than our other implementation option. Our other option, and the one we will explore, is called KeyCracker, which can be found at this website. Many of the links for this software indexed and cached by the search engines don't work. I've got a copy of the source code, so if it ever disappears, drop me a line and I can host a copy here on ComputeCycle. KeyCracker is KeePass stripped down just for the purpose of brute forcing passwords, so we download it and put it on one of our Windows machines. Windows machines? Why would you do that? KeyCracker was written in .NET because KeePass 2 was also written in .NET. Someone has taken it upon themselves to rewrite the software across platform and called it KeePass X. Take a look at that project if your needs either aren't Windows or are cross-platform and you don't want to install .NET simulated environments. We install KeyCracker onto our Windows 7 virtual machine with .NET. The first thing we are met with is the fact it needs a dictionary file. For the purpose of cracking a password, the dictionary file tells the password guesser which passwords to guess. So if we know the KeePass file owner was an administrative assistant with cats, we would simply list all of the names of the owner's cats, along with their birthdays at the beginning and end, and start guessing. In this case, the only information we had was that it was a 12-character password, so we needed something to generate a list of every possible 12-character password. 
we used a program called Crunch. We downloaded the source code from SourceForge and went to compile it by issuing our make command and got this error. Some errors I can deal with, this one I couldn't. Jumping into the search engines of the internet, it was clear that a library of some sort was not hanging out in the correct spot. We found this complaint and possible solution. It didn't work right out of the box, most likely due to age and code modifications. Instead of having to modify line 44 in the code, we had to modify line 49. So our line that looked like this ended up looking like this. At the time of this writing, we are using Crunch version 3.3 and we had to add that to line 49 of the make file running on Linux Mint 12. After that change, it compiled and worked just fine. Crunch will create word lists based upon how many characters you need, in our case 12, what kind of characters you need, in our case all English characters and symbols. For our password, we didn't use foreign characters. It will also ask how many character repetitions are allowed. In our case, we chose two. So instead of the first candidate word being all A's, it started with AAB AAB because it only allowed a single character to be repeated twice before moving along to the next candidate. There are several other options for Crunch, and this link has a great write-up on how to use it. At this point, we knew this would be a challenge, but you know how they say that ignorance is bliss? Well, let's just say we still had some hope. We ran Crunch with the following command line options. To break this down, we are telling Crunch we want a minimum and maximum of 12 characters for our candidate password. If we knew it was any password up to 12 characters, then we would have set the minimum to be the smallest password allowed by the program, which is 1. We also told Crunch to break up the output files into 500 megabyte chunks. We only want two repeating characters, any kind of characters, and choose the character set from the file charset.list and pick the character set with the most characters in it. This file is supplied by Crunch and lists all different permutations of character sets. Start at the beginning, and when the file gets to be 500 megabytes long, compress it with gzip. It responded with this output, which essentially told us we have no idea what we were asking for. At this point, I had a feeling that this task wasn't going to be overnight. I knew that before, but I didn't realize just how many permutations I was asking for and how much data would be generated. I ended up in subsequent runs leaving off the gzip option, it slowed things down too much, and I realized that I was using the files as they were being generated, so gzipping the files, only to have to uncompress them, didn't make much sense. Because these word lists were being saved to our NAS, I went to the Windows machine and started up Keycracker with these password lists. My Windows machine is a VirtualBox VM running on my Linux machine. Since I have four cores on the Linux machine, I dedicated three CPUs to the Windows Virtual Machine. I allowed one CPU for operating system overhead and decided to run Keycracker with two simultaneous threads. This worked well until I got this error. I found that for some reason I couldn't successfully run Keycracker with a thread count greater than one. What I could do though was manually start two separate processes and let Keycracker work on two different dictionary files. Running a third didn't offer any increased speed, so I left it at two. I did the math, it wasn't pretty. Each file would take about two days to complete, but I could run two processes at once, so I would average one file completed every day. So it would only take me about 383 billion days to complete. If I had started on August 22, 2012, I would have finished 150 million years later. These numbers are highly dependent on the hardware used to do the brute force cracking. You could get bare metal operating systems instead of virtual machines with many, many processors, but in the end, would it be worth it? Would the passwords retrieved have a value that exceeded the cost to break into them? If you'd like to see how your password measures up, there are a few password difficulty measuring sites. They don't measure the strength of your password, but they give you an estimate as to how long it might take to brute force defeat it. In the end, we discovered a different method to discover the password, which didn't involve computing cycles beyond our budget. Since we weren't able to crack the password file we were given, we did want to see what it looked like when it successfully cracked a password file, and this is what it looks like. For a transcript of this video and all the links and code for this deep dive, visit ComputeCycle.com and look for our September deep dives. You can contact us at feedback 
at ComputeCycle.com and follow us on Twitter at ComputeCycle. I'm Brett Thorson. Thank you for watching this Compute Cycle Deep Dive brought to you by Exivity Incorporated. That was awful. Oh.